Everyone, so we saw more than 100 anti-Israeli protesters arrested at Columbia University's campus. They had a massive demonstration. The protesters set up a makeshift encampment on the quad at the university, camping out in tents, forming human chains and shouting chants of support for Hamas. Uh, New York City's Mayor Eric Adams called their actions and their words vile. Very troubling. Uh, when you are protest, protesting for peace, you should not be using inflammatory comments like we saw. It was very vile. Brooke Goldstein's the CEO of the Lawfare Project and Paul Morrow's our Fox News contributor. I, I, Paul, quick question on this. I, I'm, I'm surprised they took action, right? I mean, you, you've seen what's happened in this city over the past three and a half, four years. That they went in there and cleaned it out when they could have had a situation that went for months all throughout the summer. So Columbia apparently really wanted to move on this. They gave them a few days, um, gave them a deadline, informed them, and apparently conditions that were getting very, very squalid. The, uh, the university was concerned about a dangerous situation. It was starting to look like Occupy Wall Street, which is no accident because it's a lot, a lot of the same constituents that are involved. And so ultimately they used the trespass violation, and that means that Columbia had to be the complainant. So Columbia stepped up here. Uh, let's see if they continue in the way that, yeah. let's say, Vanderbilt and Google have decided that maybe they're going to start to draw a line around some of these yeah. uh, activists. Some, some interesting moves this week. You're right, and you're right to bring up Google as well. Brooke, um, Elon Omar's daughter was one of those arrested, and she immediately tweeted this. She said, those of us in Gaza, solidarity encampment will not be intimidated. We will stand resolute until our demands are met. Our demands include divestment from companies complicit in genocide, transparency of Columbia's investments, and full amnesty, in all caps, for all students facing repression. So that was on X. And where to next, do you think? Exactly. I mean, what does it say about our state of the, our society right now that the daughter of a sitting member of Congress is arrested at a pro-terror rally where she was amongst people who are chanting death to the Jews, death to America, who are saying, we are Hamas, who were abusive to the police. And guess what? 108 people were arrested, and I thank the NYPD for doing that. And Paul was right. It's because Columbia finally stepped up and asked the police to remove them for trespass. But all 108 of those people were then released from jail, and they were all outside cheering and proud of what they had done. So where are the consequences? What is the deterrent effect here? Will the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, even prosecute them? Pressure has to be put on the DA's office to prosecute these people because they are disgusting and they are ruining our society. And they're, by the way, I don't even think they're all students either. I think half of them are paid to be there. We know that they're being bused to these protests. And it's not about Israel. It's about the destabilization of America. That is their intent. Brooke, you raised an interesting point. I think Paul's the perfect guy to answer your, your, your query there. Paul, you were there the other day, right, in New York City. They're coming over the bridge. Right. Who are they? Where are they from? Are, are they Middle Eastern students? Are they Middle Eastern civilians or immigrants here in New York? Or are they agitators like we have seen before? More the latter. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing, as I said, we, we saw it um, during Occupy Wall Street. We saw a lot of it after the George Floyd incident in 2020. And what happened here is that the pro-Palestinian cause has very cleverly allied themselves with a lot of the progressive groups that exist not only in New York City but nationwide. And it's a force multiplier with them. And so they managed to leverage all of these groups on the left. So they're getting funding. They're getting organization. That's why all the tents look the same. That's why they're getting buses. And so for them, that really works. The problem here is that it is segueing into a very troublesome area. They're yelling, we are Hamas. They're saying that every day now is going to be October 7th. That's a quote from one of the agitators. So you're getting into a point where normally you would start to open cases on these folks. The problem is because it hits this wide swath of progressive activists, you start opening cases on this, you start going into search warrants and subpoenas and pulling the communications, you're going to see some of the funding mechanisms that fund Democratic candidates 
And that's going to get into a very uncomfortable area for DOJ. So it puts the administration in a very tough spot. comes down to groups like Columbia and mm -hmm. these universities to expel these students. Because well, I don't think we're going to get a lot out of law, law uh, enforcement, Okay, we'll see if that happens. I think we got the video of the protesters cheering those who came out of jail late last night. Brooke, final question on this. Um, if the war with Hamas were to end, do you think the protests would end? I'm or so you, happy that you asked yeah, that or, question. Or is this, is, this, is this the story of 2024 going into the summer and then the fall? Well, I'm happy that you asked that because in reality, this has nothing to do with Israel Hamas. Israel is a decoy. It is just being used as an excuse to stir up and to radicalize our population. And as Paul pointed out, there is no way that a bunch of 18, 19 year old students, idiotic students, are organizing this by themselves. There are nefarious forces, subversive forces. We know, for example, organizers like Students for Justice in Palestine, Wool Palestine, alleged have connections to uh, designated terrorist groups. And so the onus is on the U.S. government to open up investigations and find out whether or not, for example, there's foreign mm -hmm. money coming in to uh, foment uh, instability in this country. Okay, so we should watch that. And there's reports in Jerusalem Post again about the morality police being uh, back out there in the streets of Iran. and. Um, really a crackdown on the on women who do not wear the hijab so we will check that out too and on fox nation paul uh your brian koberger series just dropped it's called savage instincts uh that's going to be a heck of a case whenever that trial begins thank you to both brooke goldstein paul morrow thank you for coming on today and thank we'll you. see where thank it goes you. you bet i'm steve Ducey. i'm brian kilme and i'm ainsley earhart and click here to subscribe to the fox news youtube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis